Hey guys, welcome to my channel, welcome back to my channel. So today is January 4th in the Bible through a year, aka day 35. So, um, basically where we left off yesterday, and actually before we do that, I just wanted to say, I don't know why this has just been like on my like being for the past like day actually it started like yesterday but like make haste like that's just what i keep like that's the vibe that i'm getting and so that's not the right word vibe i don't know but that's just like that's <laughs> how so i feel like god's put on my heart you know what i mean like just make haste so i just wanted to share that i don't know you know what i mean <laughs> what exactly it means um i think it means stop procrastinating Lindsay. but you know i don't know if anybody else could maybe use that so just gonna throw it out there and um let it land where it needs to land you know what i mean um maybe, <laughs> maybe it needed to land with me i'm just gonna, <laughs> just gonna throw it out bring it back you know what i mean listen um anyways i'll leave so basically with that being said if you missed it yesterday um we read two bible verses or not two bible verses two days in a year um, no, but they were traveling the, in the desert for 40 years or whatever, and then they came to Rephidim, where they got into it with the Amaleks. Then they made it to, finally, they made it to Sinai, Mount Sinai, where the Lord said that he was going to talk to the people, and he was going to come down as a in a cloud, I believe, and talk to the people, but, um, the people had to be consecrated, like, ready for the, um, for God to come down. And so Moses was getting the people ready, and I believe that's what's about to happen today. So with that being said, we are on February 4th, and um, we're going to be reading Exodus chapter 19, verse 16 through 21, verse 21. On the morning of the third day, thunder roared and lightning flashed, and a dense cloud came down on the mountain. There was a long, loud blast from a ram's horn, and all the people trembled. Moses led them out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. All of Mount Sinai was covered with smoke, because the Lord had descended on it in the form of fire. The smoke billowed into the sky like smoke from a brick kiln, and the whole mountain shook violently. As the blast of the ram's horn grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God thundered his reply. The Lord came down on the top of Mount Sinai and called Moses to the top of the mountain. So Moses climbed the mountain. Then the Lord told Moses, Go back down and warn the people not to break through the boundaries to see the Lord, or they will die. Even the priests who regularly come near the Lord must purify themselves so that the Lord does not break out and destroy them. But Lord, Moses protested, the people cannot come up to Mount Sinai. You already warned us. You told me, mark off a boundary all around the mountain to set it apart as holy. But the Lord said, Go down and bring Aaron back up with you. In the meantime, do not let the priest or the people break through to approach the Lord, or he will break out and destroy them. So Moses went down to the people and told them what the Lord had said. Then God gave the people all these instructions. I am the Lord your God, who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. You must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and any foreigners living among you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and it set it apart as holy. Honor your father and mother, then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely against your neighbor. You must not covet your neighbor's house. You must not covet your neighbor's wife, male or female, servant, ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. 
When the people heard the thunder and the loud blasts of the ram's horn, and when they saw the flashes of lightning and the smoke billowing from the mountain, they stood at a distance, trembling with fear. And they said to Moses, You speak to us and we will listen, but don't let God speak directly to us or we will die. Don't be afraid, Moses answered them, for God has come in this way to test you, and so that your fear of him will keep you from sinning. As the people stood in the distance, Moses approached the dark cloud where God was, and the Lord said to Moses, Moses, say this to the people of Israel, you saw for yourselves that I spoke to you from heaven. Remember, you must not make any idols of silver or gold to rival me. Build for me an altar made of earth and offer your sacrifices to me, your burnt offerings and peace offerings, your sheep and goats and your cattle. Build my altar wherever I cause my name to be remembered, and I will come to you and bless you. If you use stones to build my altar, use only natural, uncut stones. Do not shape the stones with a tool, for that would make the altar unfit for holy use. And do not approach my altar by going up steps. If you do, someone might look up under your clothing and see your nakedness. These are the regulations you must present to Israel. If you buy a Hebrew slave, he may serve for no more than six years. Set him free in the seventh year, and he will owe you nothing for his freedom. If he was single when he became your slave, he shall leave single. But if he was married before he became a slave, then his wife must be freed with him. If his master gave him a wife while he was a slave and they had sons or daughters, then only the man will be free in the seventh year. But his wife and children will still belong to his master. But the slave may declare, I love my master, my wife and my children. I don't want to go free. If he does this, his master must present him before God. Then his master must take him to the door or doorpost and publicly pierce his ear with an awl. After that, the slave will serve his master for life. When a man sells his daughter as a slave, she will not be freed at the end of six years as the men are. If she does not satisfy her owner, he must allow her to be bought back again. He is not allowed to sell her to foreigners since he is the one who broke the contract with her. But if the slave's owner arranges for her to marry his son, he may no longer treat her as a slave but as a daughter. If a man who has married a slave wife takes another wife for himself, he must not neglect the rights of the first wife to food, clothing, and sexual intimacy. If he fails in any of these three obligations, she may leave as a free woman without making any payment. Anyone who assaults and kills another person must be put to death. But if it was simply an accident permitted by God, I will appoint a place of refuge where the slayer can run for safety. However, if someone deliberately kills another person, then the slayer may be dragged even from my altar and be put to death. Anyone who strikes father or mother must be put to death. Kidnappers must be put to death, whether they are caught in possession of their victims or have already sold them as slaves. Anyone who dishonors father or mother must be put to death. Now suppose two men quarrel, and one hits the other with a stone or fist, and the injured person does not die but is confined to bed. If he is later able to walk outside again, even with a crutch, the assailant will not be punished, but must compensate his victim for lost wages and provide for his full recovery. If a man beats his male or female slave with a club and the slave dies as a result, the owner must be punished. But if the slave recovers within a day or two, then the owner shall not be punished since the slave is his property. And now we're on Matthew chapter 23 verse 13 through 39. What sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees? Hypocrites, for you shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You won't go in yourself and you don't let others enter either. What sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees? Hypocrites, for you cross land and sea to make one covert, and then you turn that person into twice the child of hell you yourselves are. Blind guides, what sorrow awaits you? For you say that it means nothing to swear by God's temple, but that it is binding to swear by the gold in the temple. Blind fools, which is more important, the gold or the temple that makes the gold sacred? And you say that to swear by the altar is not binding, but to swear by the gifts on the altar is binding. How blind, for which is more important, the gift on the altar or the altar that makes the gifts sacred? When you swear by the altar, you are swearing by it and by everything on it. And when you swear by the temple, you are swearing by it and by God who lives in it. And when you swear by heaven, you are swearing by the throne of God and by God who sits on the throne. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens, but you ignore the most important aspects of the law 
justice, mercy, and faith. You should tithe, yes, but do not neglect more important things. Blind guides, you strain your water so you won't accidentally swallow a gnat, but you swallow a camel. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are filthy, full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first wash the inside of the cup and the dish, and then the outside will become clean too. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, beautiful on the outside, but filled on the inside with dead people's bones and all sorts of impurity. Outwardly, you look like righteous people, but inwardly your hearts are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you build tombs for the prophets your ancestors killed, and you decorate the monuments of the godly people your ancestors destroyed. Then you say, if we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would never have joined them in killing the prophets. But in saying that, you testify against yourselves that you are indeed the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Go ahead and finish what your ancestors started. Snakes, sons of vipers, how will you escape the judgment of hell? Therefore, I am sending your prophets and wise men and teachers of religious law, but you will kill some by crucifixion and you will flog others with whips in your synagogues, chasing them from city to city. As a result, you will be held responsible for the murder of all godly people of all the time, from the murder of righteous Abel to the murder of Zacharias, son of Berechai, whom you killed in the temple between the sanctuary and the altar. I tell you the truth, this judgment will fall on this very generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers, how often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings, but you wouldn't let me. And now, look, your house is abandoned and desolate, for I tell you this, you will never see me again until you say, Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And now we're on Psalm chapter 28, verse 1 through 9. I pray to you, O Lord, my rock, do not turn a deaf ear to me, for if you are silent, I might as well give up and die. Listen to my prayer for mercy as I cry out to you for help, as I lift my hands toward your holy sanctuary. Do not drag me away with the wicked, with those who do evil, those who speak friendly words to their neighbors while planning evil in their hearts. Give them the punishment they so richly deserve. Measure it out in proportion to their wickedness. Pay them back for all their evil deeds. Give them a taste of what they have done to others. They care nothing for what the Lord has done or for what his hands have made. So he will tear them down and they will never rebuild. Praise the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. The Lord gives his people strength. He is a safe fortress for his anointed king. Save your people. Bless Israel, your special possession. Lead them like a shepherd and carry them in your arms forever. And now we're on Proverbs chapter 7, verse 1 through 5. Follow my advice, my son. Always treasure my commands. Obey my commands and live. Guard my instructions as you guard your own eyes. Tie them on your fingers as a reminder. Write them down within your heart. Love wisdom like a sister. Make insight a beloved member of your family. Let them protect you from an affair with an immoral woman, from listening to the flattery of a promiscuous woman. And that is it for the Bible in a Year Day 45, aka January 4th, 5th, January 4th. Um... And with that being said, I know that it's technically Wednesday, but I know y'all are probably going to watch this on Thursday. So, um, I hope everybody has a good day. I hope everybody has a good Wednesday. I hope everybody has a good Thursday. And, yeah, I love you. Jesus loves you. Bye. Planning evil in their hearts. Give them the punishment they so richly deserve. Measure it out in proportion to their wickedness. Pay them back with... Pay them back for all their evil deeds. Give them a ta Give them a taste for what... Give them a taste of what they have done to others. They care nothing for what the Lord has done or for what his hands have made. He will tear, So he will tear them down and they will never rebuild. 
Praise the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. The Lord gives his people strength. He is a safe fortress for his anointed king. Save your people. Bless Israel, your special possession. Lead them like a shepherd and carry them in your arms forever. Lead them like a shepherd and carry them in your arms forever. And now we're on Proverbs chapter 7, verse 1 through 5. Follow my advice, my son. Always treasure my commands. Obey my commands and live. Guard my instructions as you guard your own eyes. Tie them on your fingers as a reminder. Write them down within your heart. Love wisdom like a sister. Make insight a beloved member of your family. Let them protect you from an affair with an immoral... Let them protect you from an let them protect you from an affair with an immoral woman from listening to the flattery of a promiscuous woman. Ooh. And that is it for the Bible in a year day 45 aka January 4th. January 4th um and with that being said I know that it's technically Wednesday but I know y'all are probably gonna watch this on Thursday so um I hope everybody has a good day I hope everybody has a good Wednesday I hope everybody has a good Thursday um and yeah I love you Jesus loves you bye